Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, April 17th, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Tennis Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Portland, Oregon. Earlier this year in January, and I believe again in March, Microsoft uh, published uh, two fixes for DHCP vulnerabilities as part of uh, those particular months of bulletins. Now, up to now, we didn't really exactly know what the nature of these vulnerabilities were, but overall, vulnerabilities in DHCP clients in particular, like in this case, if they could lead to code execution are always uh, kind of tricky because it's very difficult to defend against these vulnerabilities. And often if you do have to connect to a untrusted network like a hotel network or the like, well, DHCP is the one service that you really have to interact with in this network. Yesterday, a blog in Russian was released uh, with a little bit more details and a proof of concept exploit for these vulnerabilities. The vulnerability is part of the domain search list option. Now, before Windows 10, Windows ignored this particular option. So this explains why, according to the bulletins, only Windows 10 was vulnerable. The way this domain search list is encoded in DHCP is a little bit tricky in the sense that you could have option 119, which is this domain search list option multiple times. And uh, then if it shows up multiple times, the different strings are just concatenated with each other. The encoding of the strings themselves is similar to what you have in DNS resource records. It's sort of the length of each label. And then at the end of the domain, you have a zero. And it also allows for pointers where you sort of can do a simple compression. Now, both vulnerabilities, uh, 2019-547, which was the January one, and 2019-726 are related to this particular feature. The particular blog post is focusing on 726, which is the vulnerability that was discovered by the author after looking into how to possibly exploit the 547 vulnerability. What I came up with in the end uh, was a new vulnerability, now the proof of concept uh, they publish is pretty simple. It's a DHCP DNS domain list option that starts with an empty string and then is followed by a normal domain extension. They used RU for Russia in their example. The first empty string does cause no memory to be allocated. And with that, we are back to a normal buffer overflow. Now, uh, this proof of concept uh, just leads to an access uh, violation. So it's really just a denial of service at this point, but it demonstrates how this vulnerability could possibly be exploited. And Oracle released its quarterly critical patch update. As usual, it does affect pretty much all products Oracle releases. It fixes about 300 or so different vulnerabilities. Of course, one product always of wide interest is Java. Oracle does fix five critical vulnerabilities. Java SE with a CBSS score of 9.0, which typically does indicate that it's probably a remote code execution vulnerability, even though Oracle doesn't necessarily state this as part of the CPU. Another Oracle product that uh, I'm always uh, looking for is a WebLogic. And in this particular case, we have 53 security vulnerabilities of which 42 are remotely accessible without authentication. So we'll see uh, if you have more details of what that exactly entails. And IT outsourcing company Ypro apparently was breached and multiple of its customers were affected by these breaches via a targeted phishing attacks. Brian Krebs initially published this attack as part of his Krebs on Security blog 
Vipro was initially somewhat evasive about uh, this particular report, but later admitted that it was the victim of such an attack. At the Internet Storm Center Diaries, we have another gem by our handler and reverse engineering malware instructor, Jim Clausing. He's again writing about Hydra and sort of how it works for IDA users. In this latest part of his series, he's writing about strings and parameters. Well, that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.